What's going on YouTube? My name is Kronos and welcome back to the PSO2 video. So this is actually going to be a re-recording of the video itself. Um, you guys caught my earlier video that went out. If you're looking at the time in the top right hand corner, you can see it's 2 a.m. for me at the moment. I had a video come out at about 12 o'clock midnight. Turns out my two uploads that I had set up, uh, something went weird with the audio and it made my voice way deeper than it normally actually is. Um, granted, it does tend to get a bit deep whenever I am talking a whole lot, but it's not that deep. Like, it was way deep. So, lucky enough, um, some of my viewers mentioned mentioned it to me. I went ahead and took a look at it because I usually check it in post and it usually sounds fine. But apparently something happened and it just messed up the audio. So, I went ahead, made some adjustments, double checked a few things, and now we're going to re-record this. Now, technically, I didn't have to re-record this video. I wanted to re-record it because I didn't like how it ended up. Um, I know I can do a little bit better, kind of consolidate a couple of things, so that's what we're going to go ahead and do, even though we've already spent about a minute just introing basically nothing. So if you see one of these videos, it's going to be very similar to kind of my weapons progression guides and its progression guide, but more or less this is going to be a video talking about what you can use to go into episode five with. I usually, I got a couple of questions about this on stream, a few people kind of concerned that they really weren't doing things correct, so I feel like this is going to be a super helpful video for people possibly just starting the game in episode five. Um, if they weren't really excited for anything else and just wanted to play episode five content moving forward. So I'm going to touch on a couple of low rank gear, um, locations and then kind of moving into the high rank stuff. So let's jump right in. If you guys have never seen these videos before, I always do this over on the PSO2 ARCS Visiphone. The reason I do this is so that way you guys are able to also see how I got this information. You guys can go through and do this yourselves in the future for other pieces of content as this updates and you have access to the JP wiki as well, which is fully translated. So to start with, we're going to take a look at weapons. Now, I have a couple weapons I'm going to suggest for people. You can make your decision based on what you have available to you and your prices. Of course, not everyone on every ship is going to have access to the same weapons available to them. What might be cheap for me may not be cheap for you. Now, I'm sure you guys are wondering, why not just say Nemesis and Raven? They're the strongest weapons that are available. Nemesis and Raven were very, very useful to a lot of us that were playing over the course of the past, I mean, since basically beta, um, since these were released. These came out in episode three, funny enough. So at the end of episode three, we had access to these weapons. We could farm them out and they were very, very strong weapons. I'm still using mine today. I've had mine for an entire episode, all through episode four itself. No, I haven't gotten lucky and lucked out and uh, picked up a Jupiter Tullus. It's not going to happen. That's just how my luck works. But I've been using this weapon. And I'm still using my nemesis duels. Now, why not get one for hero? You might ask. Well, if you caught my previous video, that's going to be going up. Actually, that's currently uploading right now. Um, they're already actually giving us in the mission pass the upgrade item for the new 14 star that we're going to be able to make. And it's going to be available for everyone. The 13 star that you need to make this 14 star is something that will sell in the market. So you'll have access to it as well. It might be pretty expensive, but a lot of these things are going to be dropping all over the place. You won't have to worry too much about it. You should be able to get your weapon in a reasonable amount of time and upgrade it as well. So these weapons, the Nemesis and the Raven weapons are going to get outclassed fairly quick into episode five, depending upon how lucky you are, or how much money you have. So what do we recommend instead? Let's, uh, let's jump back here for a moment. I do want to touch on one thing. If you're new, if you're just getting into getting leveled up, if you're not even at the point where you're finished leveling up, don't even worry about this. But if you're at the point where you're leveling up, you're getting to the seventies, the eighties, um, sort of Volsio, or Revolsia weapons in general, are fairly inexpensive on the market board right now. They're part of something called a collection folder, meaning that they come at plus 30, and they're really cheap. You don't have to worry about upgrading them, and you can use them towards up or towards grinding your other 13-star weapons. So if you're at the very basics, don't have a whole lot, I used to say, hey, look, you can start with a Nox weapon or a Sigma. Dude, just start with a Sword of Revolsia because it's, it's cheaper, or the Revolsia of the weapon type that you're looking for. Now, granted, it's not going to be the proper element, but it's a small price to pay for it being cheap. Now, I have four weapon recommendations, and we're going to go over each one of them individually. One of them is kind of two put together. The first one is Ray into Union. Basically, the Union weapon, um, I'm sorry, the Ray weapon itself can be gotten with Rising Weapon Badges. You want to at least get two of them to get at max element. It's got solid stats. It's got a solid potential, as well as a very good SAF. And just to explain what an SAF is, in case someone isn't aware, a special ability factor is what can transfer when using the augment system at plus 35 you will be able to guarantee transfer the augment onto another 
weapon as long as it is used as what they call fodder or basically a material piece in the actual augment process that will be 100%. So pretty cool. So it has some use there. The Union Sword does get some more power, does get a bit of a better potential. You're getting some PP reduction, some active PP recovery, um, and some damage reduction. I believe you got damage reduction here as well. Yeah, you did. Okay, so you're getting active PP recovery, basically, and PP consumption uh, reduction. And a bit more power. As for how to get the Union Sword, you'll need Union Boosters, and that comes from the Baron Blossom Butcher of Light, which is the solo version of Baron Blossom. Uh, profound darkness so we'll have to get that taken care of i know s ranking him gives you an extra union booster you need five of them total to upgrade the weapon and that's done over at zieg in the shopping area now if you're like me and you really don't you're not really concerned with these weapons just yet i know i'll be able to farm them out later not really a huge deal um Fornus is actually a fairly op a fairly good option oh, i actually did miss this i apologize hang on one second because i mentioned this in my previous video and i'll mention it again if you do get the Union weapons, they actually are kind of dope because all this white right here, you can change the color of it. With the um, over at uh, either Dudu or Monica, there's an option to change photon color. You can make this like match your outfit, so that's kind of cool. Cool looking sword. And other weapons, of course. I just use the sword as an example because it's one of the base weapons. Next, one of our, one, uh, I'm sorry, a good option for us would be what I chose to go with for all of my hero weapons, the Fornus weapons. Fornus is being dropped through the current limited quest. The limited quest does allow, um, or is making these weapons fairly inexpensive since everyone's getting them as drops. It's got a solid SAF, which is phrase weak. Phrase weak gives you 2% damage on hitting the elemental weakness of an enemy. And honestly, you're gonna have the proper elemental weakness for an enemy on fights that it really matters. So most case situations, it's not going to be every single situation. And some people are like, well, I'd rather have you know consistent damage, but to be honest, it's when it matters. So you'll be able to deal with it perfectly fine. It's not going to be a huge deal. So Phrase Week is really, really strong. Pretty nice. And then we're going to go over this potential because people tend to kind of get this a little incorrect. Now, granted, maybe I have had some skewed testing in this situation itself. So I went out and tested this as well just to make sure I was right when I spoke about this. I do actually want to make sure I'm not spreading misinformation. I apologize. If something is incorrect, feel free to correct me in the comments below. But this potential... It's essentially increases power by 14% and 1% recovery of damage dealt as HP up to 50% maximum, meaning the heal will never be higher than 50 or up to 50 HP. I'm sorry, not 50%, but the heal will never be higher than 50 HP per hit. If the weapon element matches the enemy's elemental weakness or if the enemy's elemental weakness is fire or light. So the question tends to come up a lot. Should I then have this element be something different than fire and light? No, you should have it be light still. And the reason for that is because the fire and light clause that's in this potential only applies to the damage from the potential itself. You actually want to make sure that your weapon is light so you're still getting the damage bonus for having the elemental weakness of the enemy. This is just allowing you to also get this damage bonus on enemies that are weak to fire as well, or if for some reason you didn't have a light weapon, enemies that are weak to light too. So it's just giving you more spread across, but you're going to have your weapon be light anyway. So technically half of the fire and light process is kind of wasted, but it's still a very, very good weapon. And it's just free healing, so it's fairly good defensively. Your other options are going to be the Homora and Gix setup. So we'll talk about Homora. I'm sorry, we'll talk about Gix first, just because I feel like it's kind of a one that I in the past have been like, eh, not really that great of a weapon. I still stand by that. It's basically a stat stick, um, especially if you're playing a class like you want to join, jump into playing hero. Whenever you change your weapon, you lose this potential and take 70 seconds for it to build up. Now, granted, it's different for every weapon type, so I would say match it up to your class. But in most cases, you're looking at the 6%. That means if you swap to anything for movement based, if you swap to anything for um, or any, any other type of weapon, even if it's another type of the same weapon, if you change weapons, you lose the potential. It goes down to 6%. At 20%, it's awesome, but at 6%, it's not that strong. So keep that in mind. Um, this also resets upon using a mate item for classes like Hero, where you're not really concerned with using any mate items. Um, this actually works out pretty well. However, if the class is something along the lines of like, say, I don't know, anything that subs Hunter and uses Automate, this doesn't work. Now, granted again, Gix weapons have different um, clauses for why this resets depending upon the weapon. For example, I believe the Talus resets whenever you dodge. So if you're planning on playing Hero and you want a cheap weapon and you pick up a Gix Talus, Definitely don't want it, um, so I'd shy away from that. Also, you've got a de another decent SAF, 
sentence might. Starting to see a trend here. Decent SAFs mean these weapons have uses in the future. So just keep that in mind. And last but not least, we have the Hamor weapon. Now, Hamor weapons have a solid SAF here as well. Phrase weak. Same as we talked about beforehand from the Fornis weapon. So we're not going to talk too much about that right now. And just the damage potential. 7% increased power as standard, and then 7% more if you're attacking the enemy's elemental weakness. So 14% overall, not too bad. And this weapon technically will upgrade into a 14 star at some point as well. I'm not 100% sure how that's going to work out. If I remember correctly, Hamora weapons, uh, their upgrade came out with, I want to say it was like an event of some sort, maybe a weapon badge. So it's tough to say how it'll work out in global, but it's 14 star variant, the Sheehan weapon was able to use S grade abilities and those S grade abilities were fairly powerful. Because of that, it made it very, very strong. So just something to keep in mind, it only takes weapon badge threes. So even if you have rising weapon badge threes, you're able to use those. If you're hurting for any of the specific or any of the specific weapon badges, keep in mind that they do trade down. So threes can be traded into twos, which can be traded into ones. So something to keep in mind overall. Had a bit of a cough there. Sorry about that. So we've kind of covered weapons. Oh, I do want to make a quick little note about weapons. One last thing. If you're looking at TMGs at all, there might be other Fornis weapons that are similar to this, but I know it's the case with TMGs. TMGs have a second potential called Cosmic Shoot, where it's basically just a better version of the potential itself. It has no, um, no elemental clause, and it's just damage plus healing. So if you happen to be someone who's using TMGs, if you're playing Hero or playing Gunner, and you need a weapon, just pick up this and use Cosmic Shoot. You will require Weaponoid Boosters, I believe, to unlock this potential, which can be purchased, I believe, with, uh, what is it, Unique Weapon Badges from the Unique Weapon Badge Shop. And uh, you should be able to get it from there to unlock the potential. So definitely use this if you're planning on using foreign CMGs. So next we're going to talk about units. So like I mentioned beforehand, to start things off, we'll talk about the intro. You have the HIA units. They've got a pretty solid... Um, Solid set bonus, if I remember correctly. I think it's like 60 all attack and some PP. Let's see if we can find it real quick. Honestly, these are kind of the go-to units I would tell most people if they don't have a set of units and they're still like, they're just now starting the game. They want to have a set of units to just start with. Yeah. So you got 60 all attack, 10 PP, and then you get 40 HP and 5 PP from each of them. So pretty solid. You're looking at 25 PP overall. Actually, hang on. 5, 5, 5, 15. Yeah, 25 PP overall. And 40, 40, 80, 120 HP with six or with 60 all attack, which is pretty solid for first city units. So from there, we can jump on up. I mean, there are other options you can go for. I just like to keep it simple while low level because you're gonna replace things fairly quickly. And those are fairly inexpensive from what I remember. And they will be even more inexpensive at the start of episode five because people were running keys where those drop. So I'm going to say this, and I'm not sure who's in a group me or not, but you're totally fine with disagreeing. I'm going to be honest with you. Psyches were dead on arrival. Um, a lot of people overhyped these units, and they weren't very good. Um, even myself included, I used them for a while just to see what the hype was about, and then really, really looked at them and didn't see a reason why these even existed in the first place. Um, on JP, they had really, really niche use. Or they had really good use because while they were crafted, they had increased PP, I believe, but you did have to give up like your set bonus or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it was, um, but I didn't play a ton around that time frame itself. It was mostly just kind of a small blur. But if you take a look at the web, the unit itself, it's 50 HP from each unit, which, funny enough, the HIA units have 10 less HP, but give you 5 PP in, in exchange. And 25 PP for the whole set unit, for the whole set, which these weaker units actually give you the same amount of PP. And 60 all attack. These also give you 60 all attack. I mean, to be honest, it's literally the same thing as the Psyche set bonus, minus 30 HP. If I was new and starting, I would sit with these and ignore the hell out of these. Absolutely ignore them. If you really wanted an upgrade, I'd go to Brisa. Brisa has more HP overall, has only 5 less PP, so you're losing 5 PP by gaining extra 10 all attack. Now, granted, is that a huge difference? Not really, no. Um, do you really need to get 11 star units to be competitive? No, you can chill with 7 star units for a little while until you get to your 12 stars. However, if you really want to get an upgrade, you're finding yourself dying or taking too much damage, definitely go ahead and pick up a pair of Brisas. Ignore Psyches, please. They're, they're terrible. 
Um, I guess they're not terrible. If you need them out, if you need a lot of PP, they're actually pretty good crafted. But in comparison to Baristas, I don't think they're any better. But uh, just how it's going to be. So moving past that, if we're looking into 12 stars. Now, 12 star units are going to have an extra layer of utility. They'll be able to slap on left rings. That's why we're actually going to go over rings as well in this video. Um, but the where we're going to place we're going to start at is going to be the Circuit Ray ring, the Circuit Ray units. These can be picked up with Rising Weapon Match 2s. If you've been stocking up Rising Weapon Match 3s and playing the game for a while, you can always trade those down into 2s and pick up the Circuit Ray units. The Circuit Union upgrade the exact same way the Circuit Ray do. And you can also color change these as well on the back if you happen to show your units. So that's kind of cool. Um, 50 all attack, I'm sorry, 50 HP, 9 PP, and 25 all attack. Pretty solid units. And you honestly could sit with these for quite a while. The Union upgrade only gives you 25 extra HP, so overall an extra 75 extra HP, which isn't terrible, don't get me wrong. Um, so if you happen to have the Union boosters, I'd say go for it. But prioritize your weapon first, unless you really, really need that HP. If you're using the Union weapon, or the Ray weapon, excuse me. Um, before we jump into these further down units, I want to go over a couple notable units itself. We have the White Tail units, which provide 20 all attack and 20 PP. Pretty solid PP units, very, very useful. Um, we also have the Izana units. The Izana units are nice for classes that really, really need that HP. Um, to be honest, the only one I can really think of off the top of my head is Fighter. If you're hurting for HP itself, because you want to reach a certain break point, that way you're not getting completely one shot by every little tap while you're in overload. So you've got that going for you, or you can just not worry about your HP and just bank on the, uh, the iron skill saving you. But yeah, we know how that 25% takes to roll. Um, Astro units were kind of, they're a little bit more heavy on the HP side, a little less on the PP side and a little less on the damage. But honestly, I would, I kind of figure these DOA. No reason to really use them unless you really just don't have anything else. Um, but jumping down, we're going to talk about two units here. The Whale Aboard. The Whale Aboard has been dropping specifically from the new, or from a limited quest that's been boosted. As far as back units go, it's a very, very strong unit. It's 40 all attack, 50 HP, and 10 PP. You're probably wondering why don't I recommend this as the unit to use? Well, it's because of a different unit requiring a set bonus that's going to take up this slot. So, unless you just flat out have been unlucky and can't get the unit I'm going to talk about in a moment, I would mostly skip over this unit itself. The Clifford unit is pretty nice um, with 40 HP, a little bit less HP, 35 all attack, and 13 PP. The only reason I would say mention even going for this in the first place is to go with a leg unit version of this to go with the set bonus I'm mentioning earlier. Now, if there was a whale aboard leg, then I would say go for that. However, there is not one. It's only a back unit. So we have to forego this for now. Zenesis, honestly, I don't see a reason for this even existing um, other than to upgrade into Clifford. If you really want an HP unit, use an Azana unless you don't have access to one. If you really need one, Zenesis will, will work in a pinch. Or you can turn it into uh, fuses like I usually do. So... What, what unit do you really want going into episode 5? To be honest, this is a unit you want just in general, if you can get a hold of it. The Offset unit, the Offset series. So, these units by themselves provide 70 HP and 5 PP. Where they really shine is they're actually one of the few 12 stars with a set bonus. And a set bonus that's worth it. So the units each give you 70 HP and 5 PP, but the back and the arm bonus together provides 80 all attack, an extra 50 HP, and an extra 20 PP, giving you a grand total. Make sure I'm getting this right. Okay, cool. I just want to double check my math. I don't know why I have everything like calculated and set aside, but sometimes I don't even trust myself. But you're getting a grand total of 190 HP, 30 PP, and 80 all attack. Now, if you were to break that down into what stat weight each unit provides you, you're looking at, so this is just so you can compare it to other units. Of course, these two have to be together for this to work out. But you're looking at a unit that provides 95 HP, 15 PP, and 40 all attack. And that ties for the highest all attack that's provided on any unit in the game so far. That, that exceeds any unit that provides HP other than the white tail wing units. And that exceeds most of the units that provide, P, um, that provide HP. I'm sorry, I said HP earlier, I meant PP. But it exceeds most of the units that provide HP um, outside of Xenesis and, uh, and Izane. For the most part so these units are fairly well sought after for a few reasons one is they're incredibly powerful two is on the jp servers they upgraded into 13 star units 
So this is, I guess I have to do a little bit of a history lesson because this is going to kind of depend on what they decide to do. On the Japanese servers, there was an 11-star version of this unit. It was slightly tuned down a bit, but essentially what happened was these units were fairly hard to get after, really difficult to go for. Um, they were called austere units and austere weapons that were available as well. They were kind of like the end game weapons, I believe, of around episode three. Um, you had to do a ton of farming to get a hold of them. Then 12 star units came out, and then newer 13 stars came out, and they just kind of dumpstered all over these weapons and these units that people put tons of time and tons of effort into farming. So at the end of episode five, Sega released a patch that upgraded these units into 12 star units, as well as a set of a series of weapons which is, uh, funny enough, which uses the Nemesis and Raven weapons as their upgrade process itself, but it, up, or it created a 15-star weapon available that you could use your 13-star base for, meaning all the time that you put into affixing and getting it all set up. This, of course, is at a time where affix or augment transfers didn't exist. So if you augmented something, you were just stuck. If you, uh, if you could not, or since you couldn't augment transfer, you just stuck with it. You had to do another augment for something else. This is at a time where that was completely a thing. So Sega offer or Sega set something up like this. Now, granted, we don't know for certain that we're going to have the same access to the same things. Um, in the past, we were able to upgrade the Envelum units or the Invade units is what they were called. But that may not be the same setup that we have access to over on the global servers. I personally am using two Invade units, kind of hoping that it works out that they let us upgrade these. Um, I have the back offset unit, but I don't have the arm unit yet. I do have the leg, though. So if you happen to have picked up any of these units, if you can use these two, use them. Absolutely. Give them a base affix and use them. They're very strong. And I pair that with a clay fad leg. And to be honest, you won't be looking at replacing any of these all through episode five until you get to the leg for light stream units. Technically, you can replace all of it for light stream units, but I wouldn't even go that far because it's not that big of a difference. Light stream, you're looking at it's like 100 HP, 50 P or 50 um, all attack and 15 PP, I believe. So it's equal number of PP, a little bit more HP and 10 more all attack. So it's pretty much more or less the same, a little bit stronger, but the leg unit really is what you're going to be looking at, and that's probably the only thing you're really going to replace. And as long as they allow us to upgrade these into 13 stars in the future, you can carry these units even further. Of course, 13 star upgrade loses its set bonus, just gets a bunch of damage, or just gets a bunch of stat weight all around, um, but that's something to keep in mind moving forward. So that was a lot to go over when it comes to units and why those units are so strong. They're, in, they're incredibly powerful. And I'm just scrolling here to scroll. I don't know why I was scrolling up. I keep an extra tap for this exact reason. So we're going to go over left rings. Now, with episode five releasing, we're going to be able to add left rings to our units, providing extra utility and in some cases damage for certain classes. I'm looking at you, Gunner. I am so sorry. Um, TMG stance ring. Ugh, dude. Having access to that's going to make things pretty nice for you guys. So let's go over the rings that you will probably want to put onto units. I am not going to go over the class specific rings because to be honest, you should just be looking at maybe a class guide or understanding your class rings to know what you actually want to have access to at all times. But if you're not familiar with the ring system, the way this works out is if you attach a ring to a unit, you have access to that rings effect while you have that unit equipped. Now, this does cost Lambda Grinders to do, not very many, just a few. Um, and in the past, when this originally was released, it also ate the ring. It would destroy it. Um, you do not get the stats from the ring on your unit, so don't worry about it being upgraded specifically. It doesn't make a difference. And it does mean that moving forward, you do want to have that unit equipped if you want to use that, uh, that bonus itself. However... Like I mentioned beforehand, we used to lose the unit, or used to lose the actual ring. Now, they did change that later on down the line, so most of us are hoping that when they release this version of the ring add unit, or adding rings to units, we don't lose our rings again, because that would suck. Um, it also it made things pretty terrible about upgrading, so just keep that in mind. You might want to double check some information, but I have my rings ready to go. I will note, again, a few things really quick. TMG stance up, something gunners are really going to want, and... Uh, I know people are going to ask me about it since I play Bouncer. I don't know if Photon Blade homing is worth it yet. I haven't personally tested this. And originally when this um, system was available to us on JP, we have had iterations of updates for how gear works on double save or on, um, on dual blades or soaring blades. Previously, we would lose a lot more focus whenever using our weapon action itself. 
making this ring not as great until we got access on JP to a specific S6 ability, um, which is a S grade ability for units. Later on, that's the thing for 13 stars, but basically it made it so we'd regen focus in the air, meaning that these blades would no longer be weak. So the problem with this originally was you would use your weapon action, the blades would hang up in the air for just a moment, and then they would hit the target. And because we would continue to attack, we would be hitting the target while we did not have focus because we didn't get the focus back until the blades hit the target. There was a little bit of a hang there, which of course the blades do more damage with the ring, but we lose damage on the photon arts in between. Since that's since changed, um, you don't lose as much focus. You don't lose all of your focus for using your weapon action. Um, this might be stronger now. So I have to test it. We'll have to see how it works out, but I don't know for certain. So stay tuned for that. Sorry about the history lesson for those of you guys who don't play Bouncer. Probably don't really care too much about it. So slow dive roll. I don't really know if this has any use overall. I haven't really seen people using it. So each is their own. I can't really speak on it specifically, but it's for ranged weapons. Leaping dodge. Leaping dodge was something that was available for quite a while, and it became very staple for a lot of players, um, previously because we didn't have access to double jump. Now leaping dodge could still be useful. I know some players that still use it, and there are certain classes that have things attached to their jump where you'd want to use leaping dodge to be able to cancel and actually use a huge jump. It's basically a super jump. It's pretty nice that you can double jump off of if you haven't already used your double jump. So it's a pretty solid ring to use. A perfect blast or perfect recovery blast is just damage around you when you a uh, perfect recovery. So when you flip back out of an attack, it's damage around you. Damages the enemy, inflicts a stun on nearby enemies. I'm pretty sure that stun is only on like weakened enemy or weak enemies, so like smaller enemies. And of course, you can take advantage of that stun with a class like Fighter for Chase Advance, since it's uh, technically considered a status effect. Uh, technique rings, we won't talk too much about those. Again, that's another situation where the people who are playing these rings specifically will understand what they need versus what they don't need. Things to note are things like uh, the Technique Charge Parry, so on and so forth. But I believe there's a combination ring for that, so we won't worry too much about that. So, item rings, more utility. Mate Maniac is not really something that's used very much at the moment, or is going to be used very much at the moment, even in Episode 5. This was fairly useful once Episode 6, about halfway, rolls around. Because of Etwal, people are going to start healing with Mate items instead. And uh, I'll use a, a later video to explain why. But you'll be healing with Mate items instead, making this ring very useful. It speeds up the animation and makes you invulnerable during the recovery, so it's pretty, pretty nice. Mag Excitement is actually a slept-on ring. It's pretty crazy. So it makes your mag attack more often and reduces the cooldown of its special ability. Its special ability meaning the one that you get when you hit level 200. Mags actually do a tribute to some of your damage, so it's actually pretty nice to have. It's basically just free damage. Atomizer Fanatic makes it so you basically use Atomizer items quicker and you have invulnerability when you use them. So no more dying while popping a moon on someone. Pretty nice. Party Toughness and Stealth Strike. Uh, these rings are a bit odd. So Party Toughness does increase... Um, I'm sorry, reduces damage taken based on the number of players in your party. Of course, that only counts up to four. Um, and it counts, I believe, MPA wide, which is kind of crazy. So it's kind of nice. It's a useful utility ring for those who want to be a bit more defensive. Um, and then Stealth Strike, again, is just for hate generation. If you're someone who wants to make sure that the boss is never looking at you, say, like, you're playing Ranger and you're trying to stand still and just spam Positron, not a bad idea to have. We'll touch on AIS what specific rings really, really quick. Um, all four of these are pretty solid. Uh, only one that's kind of concerning is the light armor one, making it so PP costs, or reduces the cost of dash for PP, but it also increases the damage you take. You can all slap all of these on just a fodder set of units. I actually keep a set on the set I'm going to be using for this specifically. And um, you'll be able to get access of all of these rings. So if you go into an AIS specific quest, you're all set to go. Just put on the entire unit, or put on the entire set of um, units, and you have one slot for your ring. So that's pretty nice. That about covers everything. Composite rings you guys already know about. That's all the combination rings. And then the class rings, these are, our, these are right rings. So we're not going to worry about that at all. Right rings you cannot attach to units. It's only left rings. And again, you do not get the stat bonus from those left rings. You do want to make sure they're leveled up if they have effects for being leveled. But the stat bonuses do not do anything for them. And if they don't provide any increased effects for being leveled, you don't need to worry about, level, or you don't need to worry about leveling them up. So hopefully that was helpful for you guys. If you have any questions, feel free to toss them in the comments below. Or if I miss anything, feel free to toss that there as well. A like on the video is much appreciated and absolves you of half of your ad block guilt. The other half is absolved by subscribing. Both are totally free and help me out a ton. Bell or the bell icon does notify you of videos when they pop up, as well as 
anything I post in my communities, my communities tab. If that's not your jam, you can always join the discord or follow me on social media to get more information about when the stream is going live and when I'm doing anything individually. Thanks again for joining me on this guys. I know this was a long one, but I'll see you guys in the next one. I'll see you guys. I'll see you all in the next one and take care and uh, peace out.